Hey everyone, Greg and Parrot, TechCrunch TV, and we're here with uh, Satari. Uh, they're a crowdfunding company, pretty new, and they've got something really cool to show you guys. So, can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, we've, uh, we've created the technology for video that we've put into a product that we call the Star. It's an iPhone accessory right now that has some attachments for other things. And what it allows you to do is very easily video yourself. And what makes it easy is that it follows your action while you move around. Okay. So, how are you guys getting your funding for this? Uh, right now, it's it's uh, we've, we've gotten to this point in time through our own savings, and now we're looking to get to the next level through crowdfunding on Indiegogo. And the way we set it up is there's a variety of perks that people can contribute to uh, help us out, and one of those perks is actually a pre-order on a system, so they can actually order our product and get it in four to six months. Okay, so how long have you been working on this? We've been working on this for a little over a year. We left our jobs last summer and, and started digging into different technology and market needs and, and looking at all sorts of stuff. Actually, it's summer of 2009 by now. Yeah. And essentially, it moves around, uh, and it's a motorized base. And it's very simple in that it's got a sensor connection with a marker, and you can wear or hold the marker, and it'll follow you around as you do that. And it's very easy to do indoors and outdoors. The sensor system is, is, is strong enough that it can work in either case, and you can use it for sports, you can use it for business uses, and you can use it for you know, family and home uses as well. Okay, so how much are you guys trying to raise through your campaign on Indiegogo? Well, we currently set the goal at 20k because that's the point where we can break even on uh, producing a set of units and get them out in the market. Um, of course, you know if there's more people interested in, in, in extending the campaign, that's something that, that we're happy to support and can support. So why did you go with Indiegogo instead of Kickstarter or one of the other options? Well, so we uh, first of all, we you know we know some of the successes recently that, that had come out on crowdfunding, and so we thought, hey, maybe this would be a good idea for our product, and we started testing the waters by talking to the various options, and the Indiegogo team just blew us away, and were, were incredibly supportive and, and guided us to set up our, our product to be successful, and and so it's a very easy choice for them. We picked them over the other options because their their funding team is great, and we just think they're uh, you know a wonderful company. It was also great that they're local in San Francisco, so it was easy to communicate with them, easy to meet, well, meet up and uh, get some great pointers on what, what we should do and how we should do things right and what not to do. So can I bring in the, uh, the, yeah. the works like pro that over here? One of the works like pro One of them, yeah. yeah. So can you explain kind of what we're looking at? Well, so this is one that's that's been set up to work with a flip, um, and our system will, will currently work with an iPhone 4, and then it'll have an accessory to work with any tripod mountable camera system under six ounces so that includes flips, Kodaks, GoPros, contours and things like that. But basically this one is a flip version and what you see here is a, a sensor system which is where our technology comes in and then it's connected to a robotic servo that's in this box and some off-the-shelf electronics that we have yet to miniaturize yet that are in this space and then some batteries. So we basically, to demonstrate function, just taken a bunch of off-the-shelf stuff to the best of our abilities, put it together in this box, and then design a minimum set of custom things to get us to this point in time. Okay. So, uh, but, but we've also done quite a bit of optimization on the stuff that's custom, too, because it's not exactly an e easy problem to get this to track reliably or to track within different environments. So uh, okay. there's been quite a bit of work that went into that. All right. So I've actually got my iPhone hooked up to one of the works like pro prototypes over there, uh, and I showed up, and they were like, hey, why don't you just go ahead and throw it on there. We'll do it for alternate cuts. And so that's what we've done. So if he hands me the marker over here, it should follow me. And if I were to hand it back, follow him right back. When you guys hit that $20,000 mark on Indiegogo, where do you go from there? Like, where are you, where are you at in getting it from, from this to the, the looks like? Mm -hmm. and, and what's the next step? Well, the next step is really to start the packaging exercise. And so we both have a bunch of work. So... My background's in mechanical engineering and industrial design. Vlad's is in electrical engineering and software. And so we basically have to start the process of taking the looks like model and wrapping that form around the things that we create. So I create mechanical parts, Vlad will create the electronic parts. We've got a few other supporters that'll help us with the industrial design and software elements to bring it all into one product. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so basically the process ahead will be, we'll do a, a next prototype where we produce about three to five of those. Uh, to help us kind of work out the bugs of getting everything into one small form factor. We're actually sharing some of those as premium perks on our campaign. And then from the lessons we learn out of that and fixing all the bugs, we're going to be launching our volume order to ship all of the units out to our supporters. Okay, what's, what's, what's the end goal? What's, you know, when you guys have, uh, you got them out, are you going to try and get to the Best Buy? Are you guys going to try and mainly sell it through, you know, independently? Or? Mm -hmm. 
you know, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to start uh, distributing online to start with. Mm -hmm. um, our hope is that we can keep the word of mouth going from the campaign where if people want to pre-order one of these units, they can do that online. And then as we get some scale and get some momentum, start tackling some of the retail channels so that we can do that in a cost-effective way from a business standpoint. Okay. One of the reasons we're doing the, the campaign is we really want to hear the feedback of how people are either using it or perceiving to using it. And once we get them the systems out to the people who pre-order, they are basically going to be our partners in, in giving us feedback, telling us what they like, what they don't like. We're going to take all of that feedback, all of the great information, and build it into the next units. Okay. And you know the, the spirit with which we're approaching this is that, yeah, we've got some ideas on how people might use this, but uh, getting out to a wider audience, getting that feedback makes our design a lot better. And what you'll see if you look back at the history of communication on our campaign even, we've already incorporated some of the early feedback we got from users. And, and we really see that as the sign of how we're going to proceed moving forward because we really want to be um, proactive and identifying how people might use it and addressing it with improvements and features as we go. Sure. What's some of the feedback you guys, uh, you got so far? Yeah. Well, one, of the, one of the elements that, that came up very early is that we weren't supporting a landscape mode, and so something that was actually very easy from a, from a design standpoint to address was to roll in a design change and, and put landscape in there, because I think it really appeals to the people that are looking to uh, produce more professional looking video and have the right aspect ratio. Okay. That was one of them. Another major one, not surprisingly, is, is, is the why are we supporting iPhone only and where are the Android support and the Blackberry support and, and kind of all the variety of other smart, smartphone sure. support. And it's a great question and, and it's not that we're um, you know, uh, discriminating against uh, the Android phones, but it is a little bit more of a difficult challenge for us because Android phones are all different sizes, shapes, thicknesses, and um, the way we're handling holding the phone right now is a physical interface that's actually fit around um, iPhone 4 or um, iPod Touch. Um, in the future, we're definitely beyond this campaign. We definitely are thinking about how to create a really nice, compact design to support every phone out there. Mm -hmm. So what's the, the goal for the price point? Long term, it's really volume dependent. So so we right now we're offering for $200 a pre-order on the, on the system. Uh, when we get to our commercial version, it's going to be between $150 and $200. But really, we see in a couple of years being able to get to about a $99 price point for the product. And that's based on you know, some engineering investment as well as the, the cost reduction you get as your volume goes up. So is there anybody else doing this right now? I haven't seen anything like this before. No, the, right now we haven't seen anybody else either. There's, there's a couple of benchmarks from uh, 15 to 20 years ago, but, but those companies have, have since passed. And so you know, we, we're the only ones really tackling this, this need space, and hopefully we can, uh, we can come to be the, the leader in that space. Okay. So what's, how does it actually work? How is it tracking the tracker? It's a, there's there's a, a primary solution, and then there's a couple of auxiliary solutions. And the primary one is, is an optical solution. Mm -hmm. And then the other stuff is a little bit more of a secret sauce that, that we can't talk about right now. But uh, but basically, that's you know you see in the video that, that as long as the base unit can see the marker, you have re really strong uh, tracking there, and that's based on that optical solution that, that we perfected at this point in time. All right. Yeah. So what's the the angle? Like how far can it go from one side to the other? Right now we get 180 degrees range of motion, okay. and the sensor will pick you up within a 45 degree field of view if it's not focused on you at that point. Okay. okay. So if I were to take the, the marker? So uh, I'll, I'll just turn it on and kind of point it this way, turn it off. You can, there's a little white switch if you turn it back on. Okay. There's a 45 angle where it picks you up. Okay, very cool. But if I were to move over here? And it should keep going keep all the way over until you're 180. All right. I'm yeah. not going to go over 180 for the little problem. I get a nice shot of my other camera. But <laughs> That's very cool. It's you know what's really fun to do is to set up two of these at once and watch them follow you. It looks like <laughs> photographers at a tennis match. <laughs> I think the other thing is is you know people ask us once in a while like can it support multiple cameras, multiple markers, and things like that. All of those things we're thinking about and have some ideas and actually have some interesting prototypes, um, but it's it's a little bit further off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why did you guys make the decision to go with crowdfunding over more traditional funding type? Well, you know, I think it's, uh, we actually explored some of those options uh, to, to try to find more traditional sources of funds, but, you know, for products like ours, it, it, you're actually at a disadvantage at this stage because so many other companies like software companies can go out and 
develop an audience for their product and, and kind of get it out there with very few funds. But when you create a physical product, it's much harder to do that. So, so for us, I think the challenge was trying to find a way to, to get some audience for our product and to get a little traction so that then we can attract that investment. So I think as a company, we're, we're still open to, to raising additional capital. And in fact, we'll need to just scale into some of the opportunities we talked about. But we just saw this as the ideal starting point to kind of get the idea off the ground. Okay. So optimally, well, when do you guys want to be shipping these to people? Well, so we're going to be shipping the units from the campaign in four to six months from the close of that campaign, and we're hoping to do production units about six months after that. Okay. So hopefully by next CES, you're seeing live right. manufacturers and retail units. Very cool, guys. Best of luck. Cool. Thank you so much.